My DM gave my party a wild fucking session last week. And I don't know any other place to tell this story to. Hype train. Playing Joyo tabletop role playing game in a Miami Vice setting. Party needs to leave Miami for once in order to acquire something in Jacksonville. Between the number of stand users and occasional vampires we had encountered so far, we decided to take a train instead of just driving. Because if we have to fight a stand user, at least the train has space for a fight. Also fuck Miami traffic. We get on the train, party consisting of 4 PCs, as well as one NPC that just became a stand user recently. Fast forward to 3 hours into the train ride. Notice that someone only just now comes to check our tickets. Also for some reason, it looks like the sun is setting, despite it still being a few hours until sunset. Given the odd shit we have encountered, we leave nothing to chance and decide to investigate the woman first, suspecting a stand user. She doesn't even notice the stands, so we ignore her. Two party members go further back down the train, move a couple cars down, until they get to the doors that separate two of the cars. Doors automatically shut, separating both of the PCs. Mind you, these are railway cars that have the open space between them. They try to open the door and fail, despite it not being locked. PC on the front end of the door goes and gets the help of another party member, whose stand can push stuff, pushes party member through the door, so the two are reunited. They proceed to go to the next car, which is used for refrigeration. Part way in, a train employee comes out with red on his hand and mouth and attacks them. They immediately suspect a vampire spawn, so they attack. Turns out he was just a normal guy, but he was eating human flesh for some reason. Back in the first train car, the two other PCs notice something is pretty fucky when the other passengers in the car seem to be ravenously eating their complimentary meal. It turns out to be human flesh and blood, not lobster. PCs go to the dining cart and demand to know what's up. The chef apologizes that the meal was not good and offers to replace it. PC Heyman punches the chef. Only person who was lucky enough to have the potential to learn it so far. The chef gets knocked out and is bloodied, and a nearby employee screams. Turns out he was just a normal guy too. At this point, we all try to reconvene, get to the same door dividing us from before and find it is still shut. One of the PCS burns their one point in potential to raise their power rank too. They attempt to pry open the door. It opens, but for some reason the entire train shakes. That's when we realized, that the entire train is a stand. Out of character we hear the DM switch the music track and we hear Ozzy Osbourne yell all aboard. Realizing that the conductor is the stand user, the party tries to haul ass to the front. Gets to the next car divider when it immediately disconnects, with us on the back half. All but one of us make the jump. We try to grab him but we are too slow. NPC calls out their stand, I think I can, which can generate any object, bit at random. DM uses a random item generator. By sheer chance, the stand generates an entire car out of nowhere. Satisfied that he will now be able to catch up, we proceed to haul more ass to the front. We have to fight more cannibals, more car disconnections, and even the train itself. Eventually get to the divider of locomotive. Conductor looks like a serial killer, and seems pretty menacing. Starts monologuing. We all pull out our guns, because Miami Vice. Of course we are all armed to the teeth, and open fire before he can get in a second sentence. He's too fast though, since a wall of steel from the train blocks the bullets. We proceed to start destroying the train wheels instead. The whole train, locomotive and all, goes off track. We're going off the rails on a crazy train.jpg. Locomotive starts wobbling. We shoot more wheels. It eventually flips over, and the user recalls it, causing the whole train to go away and also leaving a lot of passengers wondering what the hell just happened. Try to shoot at the user, but he's too far away from most of us to be accurate. I think I can. Generates a shovel and tosses it to the PC's stand that is closest to the conductor. Conductor Ray summons crazy train, because its power is apparently the ability to kool-aid man its way into whatever place it gets summoned at. We all get about 2 seconds before we are run over. PC with shovel reacts by using his stand which lets him sharpen or dull any object or sense. 
Shovel becomes the gardening equivalent of an executioner's axe. Through a critical success, he decapitates the conductor, causing Crazy Train to disappear right before we all get hit. We finally collect ourselves. Learn that we're a mile away from Jacksonville. PC from before finally catches up to us with the car. We all get in and drive off. As a follow up to the green text posted about 2 weeks ago, I thought I would give an update on the fucking world ride that is the Joyos game I am playing in. Before that though I might as well give a rundown on the party's characters stands for ease of storytelling. Sebastian. Safe and sound. Humanoid stand that can push virtually anything away from its user, including non-physical things like fire. It works like teleportation. Edgar. Blue Monday humanoid stand that can sharpen or dull any sense or thing. The user once shanked a man with a slice of bread. Guy. Get lucky. Object act stand. Act 1 is 4 grenades that cause their explosion area to become unlucky. Act 2 in not unlocked yet. Joshua. Joyo Rarite. Humanoid Act Stan. Act 1 can view memories. Act 2 can view memories, steal recent memories, and implant memories that it has stolen into people. Act 3 is not unlocked yet. Yoshioki. Yo Yo NPC. One think I can. Humanoid stand that can auto generate any item, but it is at random so there is no telling what it will create. Party spent the night at a motel after the train fiasco. Wake up in the morning to find it is raining. Party gets ready for the day and then go outside. Two different rooms. Immediately get attacked by an enemy stand charging at us. Guy and Sebastian get hurt. Proceed to go back inside. One of the players recalls that they fought this stand once before. It's called, January Rain, and looks like a robotic, rat man that wears a rain cloud like a scarf, and has infinite range and teleport powers while it is raining. Player also recalls that it basically can't go inside. The user is a member of a 12 person gang that has it out for us called the Zodak. We still must go outside though. Sebastian calls out his stand and starts pushing away the rain of the entire parking lot. The rain has temporarily stopped. We spread out to find the user, reasoning that they must be in the parking lot if they were waiting to attack us for hours. Joyo has his stand go through the walls of the motel. Finds two people fucking. Steals the recent memory from the guy of what the female's name is. He yells out the wrong name in bed, and five minutes of arguing later she leaves in tears. Eventually guy pulls the metaphorical short straw and finds the stand user in a car. She pulls the car out and rams into guy as he shoots bullets at one of the front tires, blowing it out. Sebastian notices this and uses his stand to push a car onto her car. And then another after that. Being threatened with death via car pileup, that is only stopped by her stand's ridiculous strength and Guy's high strength holding the cars at bay. She begs for her life. Guy says she can go on two conditions. One she never comes after them again. Two Joyo gets to use his stand on her once. She refuses at first, but then allows it when the cars get lower. Joyo comes over and proceeds to noodle around in her memories, looking at the faces, names, stand names, stand appearances, and stand powers of all the Zodiac members. Satisfied with the information, the party lets her go. Surprisingly for a Joyo villain, she leaves us alone. Party then gets breakfast at Denny's. Afterward they go to the mansion of the contact they plan to meet to acquire a part of an ancient artifact. That all the butlers look identical and the owner is a senile old man. Leads us to his artifact display. Among his room, he claims to have the spear that pierced Jesus, the golden pin that we are looking for, Jesus's hand, two statues that supposedly contain people inside. But honestly, what's the chance of that, an ancient stone mask that is believed to be used for torture purposes, and the Necronomicon. Every minute he keeps asking have you seen my Jesus hand move into the dining room to discuss acquiring the pin. End up learning that apparently all the butlers are his stand, but he is too senile to understand. The party learns that apparently Joyo had acquired the stand arrow and has been carrying it around with him in a briefcase this whole time. Partway into discussions, and the old man asking us if we have seen the Jesus hand, we hear some odd noises coming from the windows. Look over to the windows to see a group of zombies trying to get in. Like, Honest to god zombies. 
Oh fuck dot jpg. The butlers escort the old man to the artifact room and guy follows, saying he has an idea. Meanwhile the others proceed to kick the ever increasing asses of the zombie horde. To buy time, Sebastian uses his stand to push the entire veranda that the zombies are on top of away from the mansion, making them drop down about 10 feet. He then goes to the stairs in front of the house and does the same thing against a second zombie horde. Meanwhile Edgar and Joyo are kicking zombie ass. At some point, Yoyo calls out his stand and tries to create something. Ends up creating a baby. A zombie baby. Congratulations it's a boy.jpg. Throws the zombie baby at the horde. After fighting goes on for a little bit, all the zombies spontaneously fall to the ground. Lifeless. Flashback to Guy. He gets to the artifact room and asks if he can read from the Necronomicon. Reasoning that if it really is the book of the dead, then it should in theory help to control the zombies or get rid of them. Old man allows it, if for no other reason than finally getting to see if it is the real deal. Guy reads the first passage in the book. Suddenly, lava appears in the floor of the room and a large demon appears. It turns out that this is the Necronomicon from the evil dead. Demon looks and asks who summoned him. Guy nervously says he did. Demon then says that the pact is now formed and grants him one favor. Guy requests for the stand user and the stand responsible for the zombies, as well as the zombies, to be eliminated. The demon snaps its fingers and Michael Jackson appears along with his stand called, Thriller, and then gets grabbed and dragged into hell. At the last second, the demon informs Guy that he will have to give up his soul later. Party regroups and gets the old man to relinquish his gold pin after some diplomacy. Proceed to head back to Miami. The next day, the old man's butlers call the party and inform them that guy's soul is to be collected in about a month, but he can get two other people to give up their souls instead. The party is now planning to find a satanist cult. After the game our DM said that he had planned for the zombie fight to spill out throughout the entire city and make us wander through the localized zombie apocalypse. He also apparently put the Necronomicon in there to simply take up space as he expected the party to just steal the other artifacts instead. The party is now planning to find a satanist cult. After the game our DM said that he had planned for the zombie fight to spill out throughout the entire city and make us wander through the localized zombie apocalypse. He also apparently put the Necronomicon in there to simply take up space as he expected the party to just steal the other artifacts instead.